What's the scariest you've ever acted towards another human being? Part 7. Also, please keep supporting us by subscribing us. Account 1. I have a group of friends who are touring musicians that would stay with my husband and I when they came through our town. Apparently, they acquired a stalker along the way that followed them through Europe and continued to do so through their U.S. leg. She had apparently left her husband and family to do this. She had gotten really violent and would attack the main guy that she was obsessed with. They had left her picture with the door guy, so they would know not to let her in. They had taken out a restraining order in San Francisco, but couldn't get it served. Some weird time limit laws. I go out front of the bar to have a smoke and I see her dancing up the street. She's wearing gypsy type clothing and sunglasses at night, great. As I mentioned before, they are staying with us and she is now at the venue. I tried to talk to her and asked her why she was doing this. She just kept repeating, I'm in the band. That was the only thing she would say to me. She got real close to the door and the door guy wasn't being very observant. I could see this going south pretty quickly, so I called the cops and told them the situation. Once they arrived, they talked to her but couldn't really do anything. They told her to stay on the other side of the street from the bar. The guys finish their set and they are loading up. Well, guess who shows back up and starts walking towards the van? I cut her off before she could get there and stood in front of her. I told her, I think you should go now, very softly. She started blabbing the, I'm in the band line again and I became infuriated Jaeger probably had something to do with this. I really didn't want this crazy bitch to know where we live, nor did I want to go to jail for hitting her. My brain shrieked, you must out, crazy her, lick her face. So I grabbed her face in one hand and licked her from her chin to her forehead while she was in mid-sentence. I once again quietly said, you should go and pushed her away. She ran and we weren't bothered again that evening. The guys thought it was hilarious, TLDR out. Crazed a stalker by licking her face from chin to forehead. Account 2. Before I start, let me say that I am 5'9", around 140 pounds, and I am more in touch with my femme side than most guys at my college. Anyways, about a week into my freshman year, I started getting kind of verbally harassed by a bunch of the jocks. I let it go for a while. I was happy with who I was and really didn't give a fuck. Eventually, though, it got too much to bear, especially when I had a boyfriend and they started going after him. One night while I was walking about, four of them saw me and started yelling some stupid shit. Insert gay slurs here. If it had been about me, I wouldn't have given a fuck. But talking shit about my guy was crossing the line. I walked straight up to them and told them to fuck off. And they tried to walk over me and keep laughing. But in the scariest psycho bitch's voice I could, I said, Listen to me when I'm fucking talking to you, you fucking cunt. I was wearing a ring with a larger stone. So when I backhand slapped the leader on the word cunt, it tore a chunk out of his face. I put my entire 140 LBs and all my rage into it. He stood there bleeding and aghast. I said, that's right, bitch, and walked away, and they haven't bothered us since. TLDR tiny flaming homo pimp slapped a wrestler. Account three. I was very drunk at one of my own large college parties at my old house. Some random one-off douchebag runs into me and tells me to watch where I'm going. Through a combination of having a bad day, this being my house and having others egg me on, I ended up getting myself angry enough to throw this kid out. I'm a large fellow about 6'3 and 260 LBs. And this guy is around 5'11 and maybe 200 LBs. So I walk up to him from behind, grab his shoulder and spin him so he's facing me. He gets a what the fuck look on his face as I grab him by his neck and pick him up. It's in the backyard, so I walk him, dangling by his neck, to the gate exit and throw him out. Yelling and words were exchanged before he and his friends left tails between their legs. I still feel bad about it. He really didn't deserve anything more than a go fuck yourself, and I'm totally not a violent person. But such is life. I did end up running into one of his friends on campus and telling him to apologize for me. Who knows if that ever happened. Account 4. I'm a female martial artist, 
And I regularly deal with dumbass guys with no training who think they can beat me up because I'm a girl. But this one guy was the worst. It was a college class, so we had a huge range of skill levels. We were paired up, white belt noob vers, black belt me, and started sparring. At first he refused to hit me, weird misguided chivalry or whatever, but became visibly pissed when it became clear that I had no inhibitions about hitting him. He just started to glare and then started trying to hit me as hard as he could. When you spar, the general rule is light contact. But this dude, who was much bigger than me, was trying to knock me out. Of course. He had no training and I could see him coming from a mile away. I said something along the lines of, Light contact, man, we're not boxing. And he made some joke about me being a little girl who couldn't fight a real man. So on his next big clumsy punch, I spun in and threw him across the room, followed him down and got him in an arm bar on the ground. He started cursing up a storm. Bitch! Cunt! and so on, so I just kept applying pressure. I had him right before the point when I would have broken his arm. He started crying, and I laughed and called him a little girl before I let him go. The instructors kicked him out after. Nobody fucked with me after that, TLDR. White belt sexist douche cries from my badass black belt arm bar. Account five. So I was at the airport and had left my jacket in the bathroom about 10 minutes earlier. I came in the room to find it was still hanging on the stall door. As I walked out of the bathroom, I noticed that it wasn't mine. Before I could turn around, I felt a man's arm around my neck and he kept yelling, You know what that is! And I could have sworn he was humping me. I squirmed away and as I ran, I looked back to find the man but ass naked with a little bit of shit hanging out of his ass. Account 6. I almost killed a guy for trying to rob my mom. We were waiting in line at a book signing or something she wanted to go to. As we were standing there, a guy came up and started talking to the person in front of us. I think the theft thing was a team deal. They got my mom talking and was asking her questions and all that. And as she started talking and getting into it, I saw his hand drift into her purse. In a split second, I grabbed him by the throat, threw him to the ground, and put him in a rear naked chokehold. He had my mom's wallet in hand. The people around us had to pull me off of him. I'm unsure how long I had been choking him, but it felt like forever and he was already knocked. Once I got off of him, I was still pissed as he laid there almost lifeless and slowly regaining consciousness. I had the strong urge to finish him by stomping his head in, though I didn't. Cops were called and the guy was taken to jail. After the whole ordeal, I had realized how savagely I had acted and I didn't feel bad. Account 7 I was on my motorcycle a few weeks back. When this soccer mom in her minivan pushed me off the road into a ditch, she saw what she did after, shrugged it off and kept driving. Saw her through her side, mirror, bitch looked right at me as I struggled to keep the bike up. I pull myself together and get back on the road. Two, three minutes later, I get caught back up to her and she is still talking on her fucking phone. Insert rage face here. I pass her and give her the bird. About 30 seconds later, I come to a stop sign. Bitch nearly rear, ends me and skids, still talking on her phone. Something someone said on the other end of the line made her laugh. This sent me over the edge. I kick down my side stand, hop off my bike, and walk up to her window. At a four-way stop sign, mind you, cars on every side. She rolls down her window and tells the person on the other line to hold on a sec and proceeds to tell me, what the fuck are you doing? You are holding up traffic, I lost it. I reached into her window, grabbed her pretty iPhone in the pink case out of her hand, throw it as hard as I can at her front window, smashing it and the phone in the process, calmly walk back to my bike and proceed on with my day. Account eight. I was a lacrosse goalie in high school and I was pretty good, scary even though I was um, a 110 LB white girl from NH. Part of being goalie is being able to see the whole field and yell to my players things they can't see, need to do. So I'm really loud and raspy from yelling every day at this point. Anyway, so in girls, lax. Around the goal is a circle which no one is allowed in except for the goalie. This means not a step in. You can't reach your stick in, nothing. If the ball is inside the Crease, it's mine. 
A girl on the opposing team decided once to ignore this rule because the refs were like 100 and blind and went for a ball on the ground inside the crease at the same time as me. We both were trying to simultaneously get the ball with our sticks while stopping each other. And the whole time I was just yelling, crease, 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 trying to get her to stop or at least get the reef's attention to the violation. Finally, I lose it and just stand up to my full five, five, get right up in her face. As close as we can be without my helmet touching her eye cage and literally just fucking scream like a crazy person, get the fuck out of my crease. She's like a deer in the headlights cause I've just gone full out Rambo on her ass. So she steps back and literally drops her stick. I realize what I've done and the little old lady ref just blows her whistle and says, crease violation, goalie's ball and hands me the ball. My coach immediately called a timeout to check that I was okay. And she told me she thought I was going to eat the girl. Ha 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 ha. I still love it. I thought I'd be thrown out of the game for poor sportsmanship. And the girls on the other team were calling me psycho bitch for the rest of the game. But it was worth it. TLDR, lax goalie, went full hulk on some girl because she was breaking a serious rule and the refs didn't notice. They finally noticed and didn't say anything about my freak out. Just handled it like any other violation. Account 9. Re... Crazy eye. I bartended for a couple years at a dive blues bar. Blue, collar, mostly middle-aged crowd. I think I only had to break up three or four things during the entire time I was there. What got me fired? During a show one night, some lady got really trashed and proceeded to get cut off. She did not like this. A fairly big guy, 6'4-ish, 230 LBs. Decided he'd play white knight and screw with me while I'm still running the bar with a crowd of maybe 85 to 100 Lots of trash talk lots of belligerence. I finally got irritated enough to run my mouth in return I wish I knew what exactly I said But he really didn't like it and threw a full pint glass at me hitting me in the head I do remember I saw red when I snapped and telling my drunk doorman that when I came back in a minute That patron needed to be out of my bar or shit would get real when I came back with a heavy cast iron mallet, he was still there. I believe the only reason I didn't kill him was his wife's intervention. Are you coming after my husband with a hammer? Yes, mom. He's a lot bigger than me, and I may have to remove him the hard way. Shit hit the fan. The coked up owner and the drunk doorman finally removed them. I lost my job because I wasn't remorseful in the slightest, and my friends called me Bricktop for a few months afterwards. Account 10. Flashback to high school, I am a 6'1", skinny as crap white boy. But I was wearing a punk rock jacket, skinny jeans, and British assault boots that day with a shaved head. I looked like a skinhead road warrior. Someone was fucking with my little friend. He's this small skinny dude who is like 5'5", tall. Well, this guy stole his backpack and he was chasing him to get it back and the guy tripped. So my friend full on kicked him in the chest while he was on the ground, grabbed his backpack, and starts walking back to our group of friends. Well, the only error was that the bully's friend saw him get whooped by my small friend, so they start laughing at the bully's expense, so then this fucker has to have vengeance right then and there, and he starts moving towards my little friend when I decide that enough is enough. He already got whooped, and he's not going to fuck with my friend anymore. I step in front of him and just stare at his face, an unspoken challenge in my unflinching gaze. The guy is a bit dumbfounded because in my leather jacket I actually look like a big scary guy. He starts talking all kinds of shit but refuses to put a hand on me. And finally his assault culminates in, I will spit on you. To which I stepped into a hard shove that almost knocked him over and just scream, then fucking do it bitch. Then the principal yells at us from far away, you two stop. And we both walk away. That is as scary as I get. Account 11. I was going on holiday with my grandparents. My granddad struggles to walk far distances, so was in a wheelchair. For some crazy unbeknownst reason, a rough-looking drunk woman started attacking him, ripped out his hearing aid, pulling his hair, scratching him, going crazy. So upon seeing this, whilst carrying my granddad's metal walking stick, started beating the shit out of her until security arrived and took her away, was seven years ago, so I must have been 11 at the time. Account 12. 
Seeing another cigarette-related story reminded me of my story that happened about a month ago. Also, I'm not a violent man. Protective, yes. Violent, no. I go to a punk rock venue in my city quite frequently, the kind where the security is lax. But due to the dying scene, the patrons are usually a good crowd and refrain from causing problems for other showgoers, as well as act as a natural security measure against assholes that try to ruin a good show. I was at a show there towards the end of August. I had invited this lovely girl, let's call her Jen, to accompany me for an awesome night of good beer and good music. After a band finished playing their set, Jen and I stepped outside to the front of the venue for a cigarette and were joined by some other venue, goers, when an individual asked me if I could spare a smoke. I, of course, obliged. This, however, was merely a distraction, as he saw this as an opportunity to flick, whip his knife out, and cut the strap to Jen's canvas shoulder, bag, and make a break for it. Jen was upset. I was pissed. Thankful for us, the rest of the guys outside with us didn't let the scoundrel move five feet before he was surrounded by punks, spiked jackets and all, delivering both boot and fist to the unruly rat. I was standing at the outer ring of this circle, maybe throwing in a foot or two, but never really connecting. The larger gent next to me had his foot on the man's wrist that was holding the knife, and with a nod, assured me that I could have a go at the miscreant, the would-be thief, looked up at me and stared as I put my lit cigarette out on his forehead. Jen and I have our third date next week, and the larger gent that helped us out is now the head of security at the venue. Account 13. I made a throwaway since this could technically get me in some pretty big trouble. I'm a very tiny girl, and I shit you not. Last spring, after leaving a Reddit meetup, I had to take the train home. It's extremely late at night, I'm walking alone. I know, and trains don't come as often. I get down to the bottom of the tunnels and nobody's down there except the four Brazilian guys. As I walk past them, I could hear they were saying something in Portuguese along the lines of, We'll get her. We'll get her, it's too late to notice, it's empty. Although I look purely Nordic, Part of my family is also European Portuguese, and I heard a lot of it growing up. I started to fucking panic. I tried to look like I didn't notice, so I pretended to get my phone out of my bag, but I always kept a knife on me, even though I swore I could never do anything with it. It was early spring, so long sleeves still applied. Now one came up to me on my left, two behind me, and one who stayed behind to watch for people. They started saying all these disgusting things to me in English, and one started touching me, telling me to talk dirty to him, when the one next to me grabbed my wrist and one started charging. I let out the knife I had slipped up my right sleeve, and dug the shit out of it into the side of his thigh. He screamed and grabbed his leg, and I twisted it as hard as I could, and then he dropped to the ground. Here I was, holding this bloody little knife I took from my dad with my dress covered in someone else's blood. I turned around to see the two behind me had stopped running at me, and I don't know what it was, but my adrenaline was pumping so hard I yelled back in Portuguese, How fucking deep do you want it, baby? Flailing the knife in a twisting gesture. They had no idea I had understood them earlier. They froze in disbelief. I heard a train coming, so I threw the knife into the bottom of my now-ruined bag, got on and left. I blankly stared at them in the window, pointing to them individually, mouthing one, two, to freak them out more while they grabbed their wounded friend. Nobody ever found out. The story never made the news. I left my knife in an enzyme wash at home in a bucket overnight, doused it in bleach, and threw it in a swamp the next day. Account 14. When I was about eight, a friend of the family's then, four-year-old son, decided it was a good idea to rip out a giant hank of my hair. As this was at my house and we were watching TV on my bed, my eight-year-old self decided that the next perfectly sensible course of action would be to smother that little fucker with my pillow. Luckily for him, the door was open and my mother saw what I was doing and managed to stop me. If no one had been there, I probably would have killed him. I still haven't forgiven him for pulling my hair, though. Account 15. I would like to preface this comment with a few quick notes. The first is that I am not a good person. I am jaded, bitter, mean, defensive, angry, 
and just an unpleasant person to be around to pretty much anyone who hasn't earned my trust. I know it sounds incredibly self-centered and narcissistic, but fuck you. The second is that I do not mess around when it comes to my safety. I fought in Afghanistan and learned the hard way not to take any situation for granted. Lastly, I live an unfortunately interesting life. For better or worse, shit is always happening to around me. Around this time last year, I was walking back from a get-together with some old friends from high school. Nothing major, just a beer and a brutal game of risk. My friend's place was in one of the less hospitable parts of the current city I reside in, so before heading out I made sure to bring my insurance along, and by that, I mean my compact, 45 pistol, baby Ruth, as I call her, was nestled in an underarm holster by my side, bobbing along with me as I walked. I was enjoying the cool night air and the sounds of passing cars as I traveled to my own vehicle when someone approached me from behind. I had already heard them coming, but didn't really think much of it. I had figured they were going to their own car or something. How naive of me. The next thing I know, I am being pushed against my door and struck across my back and shoulders. After he connects with the back of my head once, driving my face into my car and busting my nose and eyebrow up, I managed to push myself away from my vehicle. My attacker staggered back only to try and come at me again. Joke's on him, though, because in that brief moment I had drawn my weapon and leveled it right at his face. The look on his face was priceless, nothing but sheer terror. His eyes were like two big dinner plates. I suppose I must have been equally a sight to behold with blood running down my face and a big smile running across him. If there is anything in this world I hate literally more than anything else, it's a thief. And when one attempts to take advantage of me in the dark, in a strange city, they had better bring more than their empty fists to the fight. I cocked the hammer back on my pistol, still smiling and bleeding, hoping beyond hope that this piece of filth tried to come at me again. Fortunately for the both of us, he didn't, though. He simply continued to stare at me blankly. As my blood rage subsided, I thought that perhaps it would be a good idea to turn the tables a little bit. I took his wallet, pants, and shoes before making him turn around, get on his knees and beg for mercy, swearing to never steal or mug anyone again. I was about to let this fucker go when I had one last sadistic thought. I made him get up and turn around to face me, starring him in the eyes, weapons still pointed at him. I reach up and rack the slide back, throwing the chambered bullet up in the air. I caught the unspent round and threw at his chest and said, this one is free. The next one will cost you a whole lot more. I got in my car, called the cops, and scooted on out of there.